The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. We are live in studio taking questions, as always, on how to try and apply and do things naturally and come up with natural options that serves your needs and gives you more of a chance to get back involved with your health care. As you can tell, Dr. Rizal is out of the office today. He's out of the office and out of the studio. And essentially, I'm sticking in. This is Stephanie Pina, licensed acupuncturist and naturopathic physician. I work at the Rizal Center for Healing. And I can't do it alone. Uh, Dr. Rizal left me with good company to do this by. So we're going to bring back a topic that a lot of people are interested in. But I got people here live in the studio with me. First, what's the topic? Well, if you were listening or if you've gone back to the YouTube channel back in November of last year, I had the Acupuncture Society of Virginia board on then, which are my guests today. And we talked about the opioid crisis and how basically it's been growing. You've been hearing a lot about it, but there's been a lot of changes that have happened since last November. And essentially, we're going to discuss those changes and how something and non-pharmaceutical mechanisms and different treatments, yeah, say that a lot, um, basically are, can be used to help prevent opioid use and also things like drug recovery and addiction. So that's our topic for today, the opioid crisis and what we can do about it. We're going to go over some great details, but first I'm going to have the Acupuncture Society of Virginia Board introduce themselves. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Aubrey Fisher, and I'm the president of the Acupuncture Society of Virginia. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Sarah Lemmy, and I am the current legislative liaison of the Acupuncture Society of Virginia. Good afternoon, Stephanie. This is Sarah Steed. I'm the treasurer for the ASVA Society. And as always, we have we have some returning guests and some newbies, so we're going to take this nice and slow, and we're going to go over a really in-depth talk. But if you do need to call in and talk to us, feel free to give us a call here. The number is one 888 Six three zero nine six two five. Again, that number is one eight 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 six three zero nine six two five, and we are taking your calls live. So, as of last year, when we were on here on in November, and you can always look for that podcast on uh, our YouTube channel, Doctor Rizal Live. And basically, there's been an increased rise again in overall fatalities with drug use. There's been an increase, in, especially in the Virginia and D.C. and Maryland area, um, where basically drug use related to um, opioid prescriptions have actually risen above the number of accidental deaths. So we know that there's issues. We don't know the cures. We don't know the causes. And this is an individual uh, problem for a lot of different people because they're using opioid medications to treat pain management when we look at this, how do we address it? We have to come up and we have to be the source of some of the, uh, we have to come up basically with some ideas and put that forth in legislation, put that forth in local clinics and be able to give patients education. I'm going to have some of the girls actually tell you what's happened since last year and start to fill you in on from a legislative layer too. What are we seeing the, the air start to change and how does that affect patients overall? Well, in May of this year, the FDA recently submitted a blueprint for prescriber education for extended release and long-acting opioid analgesics to an open comments period and is now undergoing a review of the comments received up until this past July 10th, 2017. And what uh, sort of caught our eye about this blueprint are the recommendations that non-pharmacologic treatments for management of chronic pain be used first before prescription opioids. Uh, in particular, acupuncture and chiropractic services were mentioned as some of these non-pharmacologic um, treatments. I also believe that the Joint Commission recently uh, revised their policies. Is that correct, Aubrey? Uh, yeah, the Joint Commission in July of this year um, announced an implementation for a new and revised pain assessment and management standards that go into effect in January of 2018. Um, and they also uh, mentioned in their new standards that um, they are going to push for uh, non-pharmacologic therapies to be actually included in the hospital setting. 
So we know that they're starting to recognize this. They're, they're definitely saying there needs to be some treatment actions before going to pharmaceutical um, use of opioids. And the great thing is, what was it, last year, 2016, is the original CDC guidelines for prescribing opioids. The number one thing that they recommended was non-pharmaceutical treatments. So the Acupuncture Society has been working hard in this state especially, but in other states have started to notice changes and make that happen, give those patients options. Now, you're probably thinking, what's the prevalence of this stuff happening, and what do we tend to see as well, too, and how do we tend to help patients? Yes, this is Sarah Steed. I just want to try to explain to the public that you can use acupuncture to really help with a lot of local pain and swelling, especially after an accident or after surgery. And I've had many patients with severe nerve pain, and acupuncture can sometimes work better than a narcotic drug. Um, it works very well for um, patients that are having trouble walking, possibly bulging discs, and they respond very well to this treatment. Sometimes just with a few treatments, they're really feeling quite a bit better. So overall, when we kind of look at some of the options that are out there, we're seeing hospitals recommending non-pharmaceutical treatments, including acupuncture, which is great because when the original guidelines came out, they really left it kind of blank as far as what are these therapies? And even patients were looking for, you know, what what do I do with this? A lot of the original guidelines was how to prescribe opioids still. And basically a lot of focus was put on how to get rid of drug addiction and recovery and making the availability of um, basically uh, anti-overdose type of medications available to the public as well too, like naloxone, which is a uh, kind of counteracts with the effects of opioids. Why do we think that opioids and the opioid adem- epidemic became such an issue and how is that playing an effect in, in patients' bodies that are treating pain and also how do we as acupuncturists, not as the medical providers who are prescribing this, play a part in this role? Well, Stephanie, we know that... Um uh, opioid medicines were not really intended for long-term use. They were actually intended for um, post-surgical pain, uh, and um, it, but it's been it's become in the recent years it's become uh, acceptable to prescribe opioids for long-term non-cancer-related pains, and that has led to the epidemic that we have today. It has led to um, you know more Americans being addicted to to prescription opioids. And uh, one of the things I think is so great about acupuncture as well as some other um, integrative modalities is that it's helpful for both um, the recovery uh, or detoxing of addiction, but also for the prevention of addiction in the first place by addressing the pain um, without having to even uh, start opioids. So basically, when when we're talking about opioid therapy, too, a lot of people have to understand that opioids have been around for a long time. We have to think about opioids came from opium, which also has a quite a history. And there's some researchers that actually say that this is almost the third round of opioid crisis that we've been dealing with. The first one, luckily, Bayer first put out morphine for pain management or heroin, sorry, for pain management to help treat in the 1800s. And that created a, a, a basically an epidemic. The second time was after World War II and basically the Vietnam War when people started to use morphine for uh, treatment. So these are the types of drugs that you're hearing more and more about that got used. And some of you may have some of these drugs as well, too. So it can be simple, something like codeine, uh, fentanyl, hydrocodone, methadone, Demerol, uh, Loracet or Loratab, Oxycontin, Percocet, MS Cotton. So some of these drugs that you've been kind of also hearing in the news that people have been having issues with have been on the market for quite some time. And it's not until recently that, you know, the government's stepping up saying it has to be dealt with. We have to find ways to not only treat pain management, but we also have to find ways to treat these people who have issues too. Uh, I know when I see some of the patients in my clinic, there's a fine line between patients being called drug addicts who are on some of these pain medications and going, I survived because of these, don't take them away from me. But then there's also ones that don't know how to, how to respond elsewhere. That's where we come in because I think we can address other aspects of pain management as well, too, that are often overlooked. Yes, it's really hard to understand until you try acupuncture, but basically when you put a few of these little tiny needles in a patient, it releases endorphins and they feel very relaxed and feel very good immediately. 
Um, you want to do um, the acupuncture for at least 20 minutes for an adult usually. And it's, so it's a v- really uh, low invasive procedure. And most people really feel quite relaxed and sleep better after they've had a treatment. And, uh, you know, we mentioned acupuncture a lot when it comes to uh, pain and the opioid crisis. But um, what you have to understand is that also acupuncture is a, a modality under a bigger um, umbrella of a medical system known as traditional Chinese medicine. So we don't just address or most uh, most acupuncturists don't just address um, pain with acupuncture. They also address pain in other holistic ways. So we we often talk to our patients about, you know, nutrition, um, good sleep. Um, mind-body uh, exercises such as meditation. Uh, you know, it's very important, especially for people who are in pain, to manage their stress, manage their diet, which can often lead to uh, uh, complications, inflammation, for instance, and um, and to manage their sleep because sleep is a very, very important uh, uh, process in the body's ability to heal itself. So sometimes what we can do is we can often break uh, a cycle where people are in pain and then they can't sleep, and then once they get they're able to sleep, we we start seeing changes in their pain. When we think about that healing process as well, too, and unfortunately the people that are on some of these medications, there's a lot of side effects that go along with that. Um, I don't know. I remember the first time seeing this one commercial was during last year's Super Bowl where they had a commercial specifically treating constipation related to opioid use. Um, the, the guy just wanted to go to the bathroom. That's That was his goal. Um, and what was amazing is that that's, that's typical. And as opioids, unfortunately, have a tolerance, so you have to keep increasing the amount that you use. So in the side effects, they keep increasing as well, too. So we see things that come into the office that we have to evaluate and treat. So you're not only treating the person in their medicated state, but you're treating those side effects as well, too. How often do those do those issues like constipation, sleep, anxiety, how often do we see those even without um, basically opioid use and see that in our practices on an everyday basis? I, I would I would say on a daily basis, uh, people come in the doors with um I constipation with lack of sleep with stress basically um things that they should be doing every day like their lifestyle um that they think is normal but when we start asking into it um they realize okay maybe I'm not getting enough sleep maybe I'm not um going to the restroom as uh frequently as often maybe I'm stressed out and I'm not doing anything about it and that's kind of where acupuncture can come in and help address those issues and then if they happen to have pain as well we can treat them naturally without having side effects or without them having aggravation of these other symptoms. So we look at some of these medications, and they're obviously a very heightened awareness. It's it's basically putting us in a very sympathetic response. So that's one of the reasons how constipation happens. If your body's... If your body thinks it's running from the tiger, it's certainly not trying to go to the bathroom at the same time. So a lot of this stuff is all happening. The great thing, and we'll get into a little bit later, is how acupuncture actually works a little bit on the body itself and what we call endogenous opioids, so our endorphins, which is the mixture of feeling good, but also having pain control at the exact same time. We're going to take a call when we come back from this break, and I hope you stay tuned for the Acupuncture Society of Virginia as we continue to discuss the opioid epidemic and what you can do about it. And welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rizzo Live Show. We are live in studio, minus Dr. Tom Rizzo, because he's teaching somewhere. Uh, can't remember exactly where, but he's going to be in and out. As you know, he's teaching across the country, so you'll be listening to me and my guest more and more at this end of the year. Um, I want to go right to the phones. Joan, thank you for holding. How can we help you? I uh, don't mean to distract from your important topic of opioids, but I did have a question on um, how to get rid of a yeast skin infection. Um, just naturally, if you can. I've been using desitin, but that doesn't seem to be healing. Okay. So it's kind of interesting you bring that because a lot of times when people think of yeast infections, they're not thinking of the skin, but essentially other areas of the body or where there's a lot of folds and kind of dampness that can add to basically a a perfect atmosphere for molds and yeast and to basically grow. A lot of the times, is is this located like on the, on arm or a leg or another area? 
No, it's in just what you were talking about. Okay, the other areas. <laughs> okay. So what makes it interesting and, and difficult to treat there is sometimes you can't always get to it yourself. Um, you know, when we look at what's happening on the skin, sometimes the actual skin itself can have some trauma underneath there. So basically it allows mold to get in there. It, it likes damped areas. It doesn't like to... Um, it doesn't like things that are basically like antiseptic or that can dry it out. So a lot of times people will use things like tea tree oil over the top of it. Um, it can burn because it's alcohol based. So what we need to look at, especially if it continues to return and doesn't want to get treated in a lot of the topical, uh, like basically corticosteroid creams that they kind of give you on there can actually make it worse or spread. What you want to look at is what's going on with the rest of the system because the skin actually has a connection to the digestive tract. So a lot of times when we start to treat the digestive tract, looking at diet, how much sugar is going into the diet, how many processed food, how much processed food is going into the diet can actually have an effect. So in Chinese medicine, we see this as dampness, whether it's internal or external. So a lot of times we look there and actually helping aiding the body to actually clear stuff out like through detoxification, making sure hydration is there and also making sure that good bacteria is in there to help basically help combat some of that mold and yeast uh, fungus issues. So it can be, it can take a long time, uh, especially we get a lot of people that have like, um, you know, runners, um, runners, uh, athletes feet, uh, and then they, or they get some in, under the tail, uh, the, their toenails and stuff as well too. So it's difficult. So keeping that area dry is one of the, the keys. And then also trying to apply something and have it take a look at, especially if it keeps returning back. Hopefully that will help. Does anyone want to add anything or no? Hopefully it helps Joan, um, so that we can go ahead and go back to the opioid topics. But if you do have questions, just like Joan did, feel free to give us a call here in the office, uh, the studio, not the office, <laughs> at 888-630-9625. And essentially we're going to get back into the opioid, uh, treatments and bring up a, an interesting topic because someone brought up, you know, if we're thinking about acupuncture and the insertion of these very, very small needles into the body, how does that necessarily help us treat pain? It sounds painful. What's going on with that? What's the experience like? So we're going to get into that as well, too, because we want to stimulate the body to heal, but doesn't necessarily mean it's a painful response. And that's why you always want to make sure you see one, a licensed acupuncturist and someone who knows how to do what we're talking about and knows training and has experience in pain management. I would say some of the typical questions that we type of here, does it hurt? You know, what, what's the educational background? Uh, as we go into the, the next break for a couple of minutes, let's talk a little bit about the experiences that we see and how we kind of help to calm patients into their first acupuncture treatment. Um, I, yeah, that, that's the, the most common question I get is, does it hurt? Um, people are very anxious about it. And my, my, uh, response is, is usually no. Um, I find that acupuncture is very comfortable. And usually once, uh, a patient understands that, like, I think what, what happens is, uh, patients come in with the anticipation that it's going to hurt. And once they realize it does, they start to relax. Um, but in my experience, once I have a needle, one or two needles in the, the body, um, people just kind of start to fall asleep and melt on the table. Um, and that's because, again, acupuncture is relaxing because it's it's uh, it's turning on that parasympathetic nervous system, that, that rest and digest nervous system that allows us to properly to properly heal. So I always tell patients when they come in, you know, it's it's definitely the fear of the unknown, which goes right back to why someone would not want to think about getting off their pain medication, right? They just don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to be able to function and survive without it? So why look for a different alternative? which sometimes increases use or leads to us using a little bit stronger medications after that as well, too, since we know that there's a connection between people starting with painkillers and then moving on to different types of medications, including uh, heroin as well, too, as, as there's been an increase in, in opioid use, there's been an increase in heroin use as well. Um, I also wanted to mention, I think we should talk about the anatomy of an acupuncture needle. Um, you know, I think what people, a lot of people expect is an, uh, more of a hypodermic type, uh, type of needle. And our needles are actually very thin, um, like a hu human hair. So it's, it's very painless. We're going to be back in just a couple of minutes, and we hope you're going to be joining us as well. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. 
Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Have you heard Retirement Key Radio with Abe and Shelley Abish? It's so hard to find really good advice because there's so much information out there. People just think anything they go Google on the Internet is true. That's one of the problems. We talk about it at our events and with our clients a lot. There may be some good information that they find, but it may not be the best solution for that particular situation. Find out more about Abish Financial Services on Retirement Key Radio, Sunday afternoons at 3, right here on WMAL. And visit retirementkeyradio.com. It's the big screen stores, too, for one sale. Get a Samsung 4K 70-inch plus a 50-inch Samsung for just $17.99. That's right, a 70 and a 50-inch for just $17.99. The big screen store is the only exclusive Samsung store. And our prices beat Best Buy and warehouse clubs every time. They even beat Amazon's prices. Our expert service and installation is legendary and second to none. And this is is huge. We double the length of your Samsung TV warranty free. Plus great deals from your home theater experts on the latest in power reclining seating with power headrests. Nothing like watching a movie on a big screen. You gotta check out the big screen store. And for a limited time, a 70 inch 4K UHD TV and a 50 inch Samsung is just $17.99. The big screen store. Visit us at thebigscreenstore.com store locations in Maryland and Virginia. Digital dating has brought us all kinds of new terms. Terms like breadcrumbing, when someone communicates just barely enough to string you along, but not enough to make a commitment. Or benching, when someone keeps up a great stream of tweets or Snapchats or whatever, but won't actually get together in person. And then there's ghosting, when someone you've been communicating with suddenly, without explanation, goes silent. There's a reason so much of the new dating language is negative, because so much of the online dating experience is negative. Look, the newest app just can't compete with the oldest way of getting to know someone, face-to-face. At It's Just Lunch, our matchmakers get to know you and then personally hand-select your matches. Plus, we arrange your dates and handle all the details, from scheduling your date to confirming the reservation. Stop clicking around and start actually clicking with other people. Call 202-466-6699 or visit itsjustlunchdc.com. It's Just Lunch, the smarter way to date. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend GERD and other digestive disorders presented by Dr. Tom Roselle, D.C. on Wednesday, October 4th at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rosell Live show. We are live in studio taking questions and talking about the opioid crisis and one non-pharmaceutical option, acupuncture, along with the many other ones that you can possibly look into to help out with pain management and also to help in the prevention of opioid addiction as well, too. Uh, I do want to bring up, since we're bringing up different options and stuff, too, actually Dr. Lamp, who you've heard on this story uh, on the show, and also Dareth Painter, who has been on the show before talking about thermography, are over at the Natural Living Expo, which runs today, September 24th, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. over at the Fairview Park Marriott and Conference Center in Falls Church, Virginia. 
If you get a chance to go over there, there's a number of free lectures um, with your access to get in. Um, there's exhibitors, and we are booth, I believe, number 98 over there. I will actually be over there later on tonight as well, too. Um, you might see some of the Acupuncture Society members floating around. You never know. Learn some more about acupuncture and follow up from today's show as well, too. So if you can attend over there, uh, all included prices. It's uh, $10, I believe, with admission with a coupon. And um, you can go over there. It runs all day. Lots of different, uh, like I said, workshops and, and vendors as well too so we'll be over there back to the opioid crisis and i think what's important when we're talking about pain management and working with patients you have to understand the individuality between the treatments and that obviously like each patient is different and their conditions are different so is each practitioner so i wanted to kind of give you some of our real life stories on how we've treated patients in this type of area and um, really bring it to, you know, ahead of how, how does this happen on an everyday basis and why that you should kind of come and consider acupuncture as well, too. So, Aubrey? Um, well, my experience, uh, I do a lot of orthopedic style um, acupuncture, what we call sports acupuncture sometimes. So I, I work with a lot with um, muscle imbalances. So that is how I um I often address pain is um, by releasing the muscles that are very, very tight, but not, but also balancing the rest of the, the muscles in the body. So like if you have chronic back pain, you know, obviously your, your back is going to get tight, but then the core, the front muscles, the abdominal muscles will start to comp- compensate and then they'll get tight. And as they get tight, they're going to pull you forward, which is then going to, you know, cause this um, imbalance between the front and the back. So that's often how I address uh, pain and I get very good results and, um, it's very helpful uh, to bring the body back into a natural uh, posture. Sarah? Well, I'd like to just share with uh, our listeners. I um, originally, 30 years ago, had seen a lot of acupuncture on horses in particular in Middleburg, Virginia. So to get my first treatment, I went up to my school and I just walked in and got a treatment. And it was just profound. It was just a really wonderful experience. I felt relaxed, but I also felt energy. And I really don't like needles, let me tell you. So I would just want to share that with everyone, that it is not an unpleasant thing. It's based on uh, principles of nature. And it's been around for thousands of years. And there is really a diagnosis, even if you don't um, verbally talk to your acupuncturist, they can tell a lot about you just by looking at your tongue and your pulse. And it's been around for a long time and it really works. I know I had a patient uh, a number of years ago who was a postal worker and was coming off of their Christmas shift. So, you know, one of the busiest times that they possibly have to run around and had pulled his back muscles out and basically was put on workers comp and was giving a number of heavy juice opioid medications to the point where he did develop an addiction. Uh, the, one of the current ways to treat that, you know, and to bring someone down is to bring them to a methadone clinic. And so basically he was taking one medication and switching it for another. And unfortunately, as his pain started to go down, his prescription use did not. And so he started to come in for acupuncture on, you know, more than a once a week basis because, you know, when you're dealing with chronic pain, you have to treat where they are and you want to be able to see results and what's working, what's not working for them. And we were able to decrease his chronic pain. But what was interesting is though, didn't, even though he didn't have addictive behaviors and was doing well, he still had side effects for a long time after it because it did change chemically what was going on in his brain and his body. And it also, I remember something came up like a toothache or a headache. And so the first thing he thought about going back to was that morphine uh, or the methadone. And essentially he was still quick to the gun to go back to that pain medication. So when we work with patients, we have to understand where they are mentally, what's in the environment around them, and also help to be able to support them as well too. So even though we're talking a lot about the effects of acupuncture itself on the physical body, we have to also look at the mind, body, spirit as well too. Now, what's interesting is in other states across the nation, they've started to actually implement acupuncture as part of treatment programs, and they've done it in unique ways where they've got the support of the community, the support of their local um, lawmakers as well, too. Um, Sarah, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, so as early as, I think, 2015 in a couple of states, um, well, we have the states acting um, independently of um What's going on federally to incorporate acupuncture into their healthcare systems? And a lot of um, states have basically set up pilot programs through bills that have been passed uh, to kind of see um, 
the effectiveness of acupuncture as an alternative to opioids. Um, for example, we have Maine, uh, we have Oregon, and we also have Vermont, which in uh, 2016, they signed into law S-243, known as the Opioid Bill. And in this bill, um, uh, an appropriated fund was uh, developed to pay for implementation of a pilot program uh for um, Medicaid-eligible patients uh, to see if it could help with um, pain alleviation and basically to see if um, those with pain would be able to return to social, occupational, and psychological function uh, and if their pain would go down and um, kind of curtail their need for taking opioids. So, and what I think is also interesting, kind of deferring a little bit from this is, you know, when you look at what states are also doing to help identify the address, the issue, you know, they're making naloxone in Virginia, at least they're making naloxone free from people who think they may have a loved one or a friend who might be suffering from an overdose. Um, that's usually also available with first responders as well, too. I know I have a uh, cousin in New Hampshire that uh, is a first responder and it's, he's, saying on a weekly basis he has to give that out multiple times a day um, because you never know what you're going to come up with and it's just assumed that they're they're having some kind of pain medication overdose um, because it's we get most of the pain medication issues from not the prescription side but from the getting it from family members and not using it for the correct reasons um, we also have a lot of drug monitoring programs as well going too. So different types of things where you can actually bring back some of the prescription medications that you're no longer using, being able to get rid of that. Um, I know CVS is starting to bring in an, a, a program, I think in 2018, where you're going to be able to bring back your medication so that you don't have to worry about that being around the house um, and others getting into that. Uh, drug monitoring and making sure that uh, certain drugs are not prescribed overdosing or giving too much of a medication at one time, um, but also just making sure that there's more people that are available to do different types of uh, detox treatments. And so it's not really available to everybody. And there's usually wait lists for detox centers and clinics as well, too. I mean, we see the TV ads on how great a detox center could be, but that's not the reality for a, m a majority of people out there. When we think about acupuncture and we think about opioids and we said that it increases the body's own, op own opioid response, does that make it more effective or just as effective as using an opioid medication? Because essentially we're tapping into those same receptors in the body. So when we see it, we know we see common issues come in, low back pain, knee pain, osteoarthritis, um, headaches, migraines. You know, it's not just about joint pain in the body, but we also have to think about the physiological pains and the psychological pains, which there's been less research on acupuncture on that aspect. When we have a patient come into the clinic, what are some of the concerns that they also think about how they're going to be treated and some of the lifestyle changes that we might have to also bring into place? Well, I think like we said before, um, the thing about acupuncture is it is a lifestyle medicine. It's focused on the whole body, um, you know, mental, physical, emotional, um, because all these play a part in how we're feeling physically. Um, and I think that a lot of patients, uh, when they come in, it's sort of like they have expectations when they go to see a Western doctor. Um, they go in, they spend maybe five, ten minutes, and then they get a prescription. Um, that's not the case when we come in to see an acupuncturist. Um, from my own uh, experience, you know, we have someone come in. Uh, we uh, basically do an intake, a consultation, an evaluation with them, see where they are individually because, you know, Everyone can have a headache, but because everyone's different, it's going to be treated differently. There's going to be different routes, different symptoms. Um, and, and I think also going back to why you said, well, can, you know, um, your body's own uh, opioid, so to speak, be just as effective or more effective than opioid medications? And I believe some of the research is pointing out that it can be as these are our own internal hormones that are being circulated or and stimulated in our body. And so we're going to be, or the body's going to be more receptive to the products that it makes versus products that are made outside of it. So you don't have to also deal with the fact that your liver has to process all the other stuff that's going on with there as well, too. Exactly. Which is where all those lovely side effects come into play. So, 
And I definitely see a correlation between chronic pain and depression. Um, you know, a lot of people who come to me who have had chronic pain uh, start to kind of fall into this depressive cycle because the pain is keeping them from doing the things they love, whether that's uh, lifting their grandchildren or playing sports or exercising. So some people can't exercise and then they begin to lo- to, to gain weight. And then as they gain weight, they get, um, you know, they get upset with themselves and they start to have body image issues. So, you know, we we have to address uh, in clinic, we have to address that as well. We have to address where they are emotionally with their pain um, and and, you know, kind of bring them back into themselves so that they can start to help themselves as well as, uh, you know, the acupuncture helping them. So we also know, too, that one of the great things is actually just this week, They had, uh, we had 37 attorney generals actually from different states basically put out information really encouraging more of this farm, uh, non-pharmacological treatments, uh, acupuncture being one of them. But to have that many attorney generals come together is quite a remarkable thing. So let's hear some more information about what that does. Well, the attorney generals wrote a letter. There were 37, and they wrote a letter um, to the American Health Insurance Plans, which is a as a corporation that um, that that deals with uh, creating insurance policy. And they encourage the insurance insurance companies to um, consider uh, making non pharmacologic therapies more available, uh, so that. Um, so that people can access uh, things like acupuncture, chiropractic, physical therapy uh, on a more regular basis so that they can avoid opioid, uh, prescription opioid uh, treatments. So we also know, too, that with acupuncture use with pain management, and we discussed a lot of this on the show back in November, is the fact that it's also great because it can be used as an adjunct with addiction therapy for those already on it and also recovery. And the National Acupuncture Detox Association was one of the main um, organizations back in the 70s that started programs to treat people how to treat in clinics. And a lot of acupuncturists, I think everyone in here has done some of those programs um, and basically been able to show how you can decrease those withdrawal side effects, how to, like Aubrey was saying, help the parasympathetic system, that rest digest that allows us to help heal, increase, and then also help out with other things like sweating, the cravings, everything that's going on, and even in some cases help actually prevent relapse as well too. Um, anyone want to speak on when they've actually done a NADA protocol, which is usually ear points, so people don't think of body points with acupuncture, but this is all in the ear because of the direct connection to the neurological system, how they've actually seen a response, whether it's related to an opioid treatment uh, or pain management or an addiction type of clinic. Um, well, as part of our schooling, I know that sometimes we had to go to different community centers um, while working towards our NADA accreditation. And um, some of these community centers um, were in actual detention centers. So some of these people were there because they did have substance abuse problems. And I can tell you that um, having spent probably, what, two or three years going to these different centers, um it's amazing what putting five needles in each ear can do. Um, and I think that those receiving the needles as well were pretty surprised at, um, at the results as well. Um, sometimes they would put up a bit of a fuss about getting the needles, uh, not really understanding how it works. Um, but like we've said before, once the needles are in, they tend to get relaxed and to feel relaxed. Um, like I tell them, that's great. The more relaxed you are during treatment, the more effective, again, um, by activating our rest and digest system. Um, sometimes I've seen patients get a little sweaty um, during treatment, but often afterwards they find that um, any anxiety they had is drastically reduced. Um, their cravings, at least for then, have gone down. And I find that the more often they receive these treatments, um, the longer the effects of the treatments last. So we know that acupuncture, and I'm sure even in, in centers like that too, and in other detox centers, they're taking into consideration nutrition, getting those vital nutrients that we're losing through different substances, whether it's alcohol, um, prescription medication, um, putting that back in other non-pharmacological Therapies that are included in this can be massage therapy, biofeedback, chiropractic, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, yoga, um, physical therapy, uh, exercise. You know, when we talk about runner's high, well, guess what? That's kicking into the body's endorphins that we basically want to use for treatment to also feel better, too. 
that makes it tough because everyone that comes in starts feeling better and then they want to go out and do too much activity because they feel so great. A little different, but same kind of thing. We want to get them active and moving as well, too, to keep function going. We're going to be back in just a couple of moments for the final segment. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you a little bit later at the Natural Living Expo in Falls Church. And we'll be back. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. And welcome back to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are live here in studio, and I am joined with the Acupuncture Society of Virginia as we fill in for Dr. Rosell being out and about educating. We're going to go back to the phones, and uh, let's take the next call. How can we help you? Hello? Hi, Barbara? Yes, oh, I'm glad. Oh, I'm so glad. This is a call out of desperation. Uh, I was hoping the answer would be yes. Can acupuncture in any way, shape, or form, uh, form help an older gentleman, like most men have this problem, that urinate several times during the night, which is very disruptive to the sleep? It's just disruptive. Can that be of help at all? Yes. <laughs> That's a good question for you. It's, and it's, and it's one that we see quite frequently because, you know, as we see the general public, uh, start to age and stuff, we're seeing more issues related to geriatric medicine. And really there's no, uh, you know, excuses sometimes when, or any options from a conventional medicine standpoint, because what do they tell you? Well, you're just getting old. We don't believe that. Um, you know, there are different things that we have to do. And obviously we'd want to try to figure out, you know, is he urinating because of probably is it prostate issues? Is there issues with the kidneys? Is there also issues with any diet? Like inflammation response will cause more water to be as, um, collected. So sometimes we're waking up more during the night. Um, also, we can look at, is there any blood sugar issues? So looking over lab work and looking over a general health history is always the best place to start because uh, that's a great place to treat. But a lot of the times with acupuncture, you want to help support the kidney and urinary bladder functions. You want to help support their digestive tract functions so that if there is water accumulation, the body knows how to deal with it. So what I would definitely recommend is that you find a local acupuncturist near you. And the great thing is that if uh, you are in Germantown, um, you can look up in your area to find um, a, an acupuncturist. And I'm, most of them are happy to, if you give them a call, they'll, they'll talk to you. You may be able to consult with them. Actually, we'd like to come to your office and see you, actually. We could do that, too. So you have the address. (laughs) Uh, You have the address, so we can definitely set that up. Just give the office a call and just say you want to come in, and we could speak some more about this. Because really, the more you know about a patient when they're coming in, the better you're going to be able to individualize that treatment for them. Just because someone else sounds like they have the same thing. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm so pleased that you said yes because my fingers were crossed. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling in. And so we're gonna we got a couple minutes left here. So what we're gonna do is go back to the opioid crisis. Um, final thoughts from the Acupuncture Society of Virginia. Uh, and first, I want to thank them for coming on. Like two of our members, the two Sarahs, this is their first time on, so I think they did an excellent job. Uh, and Aubrey has returned with me once again. Um, so, you know, we may have them back on again. You never know when I need a, a I need some sidekicks. I was even going to say a sidekick, some sidekicks, because, you know, more the merrier in here. Uh, and Dr. Rizal, I'm sure, will be grateful to have people who, you know, are knowledgeable, trained. Um, these are the best of the best. So you want to make sure that when you are seeking treatment, that you're finding licensed practitioners. Talk that over with them so they can come up with treatment just for you especially when it comes to pain management and dealing with issues like the opioid crisis. Um, so some final thoughts um, from each one of you, and then I will go from there. This is Sarah S. I just wanted to recommend that everybody get at least one acupuncture treatment every month. It'll just change your life. Have a great day. I just want to say that the research is out there, the evidence is out there for the efficacy of acupuncture, as well as some um, research on the cost effectiveness of impl- um implementing it to our daily health care. And if we do so um, both nationwide and uh, within each state, we'll kind of be on trend with 30 other countries that have already um, made acupuncture part of their um, daily health care. And I just want to say that uh, my youngest is uh, my youngest patient is 10. My oldest is in her 90s. You're never too young or old for acupuncture. 
I want to thank everybody for listening today, and hopefully you'll listen to us next week. Dr. Rizal will be back while he promotes his lecture next week on GERD. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, get a hold of us at rosellecare.com or and then send us an email. Otherwise, you can also find this recording and last November's recording on the YouTube channel. Just look up Dr. Tom Rizal Live, and you can put in opioids, and that will be where you can find us. Thanks, and have a great weekend. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Neuromuscular dentistry is more than just teeth and gums. Temporomandibular joint disorder can be painful, and only a skilled neuromuscular dentist can diagnose and treat it. If you are in pain and suffering from TMD, call the neuromuscular dentistry experts at Soft Touch Dental Care. Learn more about TMD and how Dr. Michael Chung has successfully treated his patients. Call 703-319-6990 for a complimentary consultation or visit bestinsmile.com. That's 703-319-6990 or visit bestinsmile.com. Thank mm-hmm. you.